Alright, so this comes up often enough when talking about shipbuilding, and I just had to deal with some comments about this. So let's talk about Guardian Shield Reinforcement Packages, or as I'll be calling them for the remainder of this video, GSRPs and Shield Cell Banks, to be called SCBs. Oh, and uh, before I forget, gotta stick in the obligatory, this is for combat shipbuilding. Otherwise, I'll get a bunch of people in the comments saying, well, my exploration ship runs a low emissions power plant. GSRPs are unlockable guardian tech that add a flat value to your shield's maximum value. There are 10 types of them, 1 to 5E and 1 to 5D, with the D1s having lower mass and higher shield reinforcement and power draw, naturally. Uh, more shield is always good, right? However, there's another module which provides a similar utility in a slightly different way. SCBs reinforce shield that has already been damaged rather than just adding a flat value to the cap. However, unlike GSRPs, they come with a thermal load and when you're using them, it can be really easy to overheat yourself. I will state now that I will be neglecting thermal load for the purposes of this analysis. Now, we have to ask ourselves, which is better, the GSRPs or the SCBs? Let's look at some numbers. As far as SCBs go, we have some options on how to look at them. I'm only going to be looking at B-rated SCBs. A-rated SCBs give the most shield per charge and pump your shields up faster. However, to do so, they suck up some more power. B-rated SCBs get an extra charge and use less power. And this creates an ironic situation where B-rated SCBs actually give you more, more shield over using all of your SCBs. Typically, it isn't a whole lot. We're talking between tens and hundreds of raw shield, but maybe something to consider, especially since you're getting more shield for less power. Another perk to SCBs is that since it's just a shield refill, I don't have to go through the mess of weighing ship-to-ship -ship differences. Though, of course, I will later in this video. <laughs> uh, last of all, the best perk to SCBs is that they can be engineered, unlike Guardian modules. For engineering, you can choose Rapid Charge or Specialized. Rapid Charge will spin the cells up faster and increase shield by 20%. However, it reduces duration by 24%. The modifiers are multiplicative, so you wind up losing some shields due to this. Specialized will modify some values, but the only thing we're interested in is the 10% boost to refill per second. So Specialized is just a flat buff to the shields, while Rapid Charge will make your shields more energy efficient. Uh, while this will be an energy efficiency analysis, we will be using the specialized uh, SCBs for this particular analysis. And then we come to mods. Uh, we really only care about boss cells. This increases your refill by 5.5% at the cost of more spin-up time. But we'll just assume you get the spin-up, so we don't really care about it. Uh, since specialized boss cells will give you the most shield refill, we'll be using them for our analysis. The values here are pretty staggering. You'll see as optionals get bigger and bigger, SCBs become way more efficient than GSRPs in the way of shield to power ratios. Obviously, SCBs have a slight advantage in some ways in that they are available at larger class slots. Uh, due to the way OofDev seems to scale their modules, this tends to mean that there's going to be some favor to the modules at larger class slots. But even the 4E GSRP at some 173 shield per megawatt is dwarfed by the 4B SCBs at almost 450 shield per megawatt. These uh, values are all pretty cool and all, comparing at a raw level, uh, but we're typically talking about fitting something into a build. So I'm going to add a couple of power plant comparisons. There's really no reason to not use A-rated power plants for these comparisons. They have the most power and most heat efficiency. When it comes to power plants for combat ships, you're typically looking at four options. 
Armored, Thermal Spread, Armored, Monstered, Overcharged, Thermal Spread, Overcharged, Monstered. Uh, we typically advise you to engineer your power plants in this order because you really want that heat efficiency in a lot of cases. Uh, for what should hopefully be obvious reasons, a number of combinations on this chart are going to be impossible to put on your ship. You're not running that 8B SCB on your 2A power plant because your ship simply cannot be powered on it in the first place. Hopefully, you understand that I'm just simply showing you the raw numbers and you need to pick and choose where your ship is going to lie on this chart. I uh, should also go without saying that the overcharged monster is going to look the best, quote unquote, in terms of shields per percentage of power. It has the highest power. It's included more for completeness. Uh, the real comparison is going to be happening category to category. In general, pay attention to the disparity in values between like-sized optional slots. Only the Class 1 slots, only the Class 1 GSRPs outperform their like-sized SCVs. In fact, in some cases, one SCV can generate the shield of several GSRPs for the same power. Now. Let's look at some ship specific cases. Now this isn't going to be a perfect comparison because this is all going to depend on what type of ship you're running, what shield, shield boosters, engineering, all that stuff, whatever you're running. Uh, however, I am going to abide by some rules here. All right, number one, the largest optional slot goes to the shield generator. Uh, what this means is that if the largest slot, and this is for the FDL, the largest optional slot is a class 5 but that's going to go to the shield generator the next largest slot is going to be the class 4 it doesn't have two class 5 slots so I can't stick the class 5 shield and a class 5 a GSRP or SCB uh, rule number two all but one utility slot will be used for shield boosters this is just to keep it somewhat consistent standard number three the only engineering considered will be the SCBs Again, just trying to keep it simple. And number four, only legitimate options will be considered. So there will be no, again, no 8 BSCBs on our Viper. Uh, what we want to look at is the shield boost percentage as a percentage of power. Remember that shield strength is ship specific. This will favor small shields due to raw values. So I've decided to add a comparison of overall shield efficiency. Uh, going to note that I am using raw values for all this, but it should all come out in the wash since we're using percentages. Instead of looking at this in terms of the values themselves, what you really want to be comparing is the magnitudes. Uh, shield efficiency is also shield specific. Biweaves, obviously, are some of the most energy efficient shields in the game. So the impact each module has on each shield is different. However, we find that the inefficiency of prismatics is restored and sometimes surpasses that of biweaves once we start adding shield boosters. This supports something many of us already knew. You really don't want to be running prismatics if you're not supporting them with the shield boosters. To better help you understand how to interpret the data, I've added an automatically sorted portion to each ship which tells you which modules will boost your shield efficiency the most. Uh, after all this, uh, here are some of what I think are interesting observations. 1. The 4E GSRP has the best shield to power ratio among the GSRPs. Honestly, I would have expected it to be the class 5 slot, but uh, oof dev, gonna oof dev. Number 2. Class 1 GSRPs are more efficient than class 1 SCBs. I noted this earlier in the video. Number 3. Class 2 SCBs are more efficient than all GSRPs. Uh, again, this, and again, this is strictly on a shield per megawatt basis. All right, I am nothing else is being considered here. Just shield per megawatt. All right. Number four, as uh, shields become larger, more and more modules become less efficient in comparison to the base shield. I you could have probably guessed this. Um, shields get really, really good as they get larger. Uh, number five, the most efficient build order changes slightly shield to shield. Uh, this is something I saw, uh, you know, sometimes the engineered SCB would uh, rise above the SCB you going from biweaves to prismatics. It's an interesting um, thing to note. I don't know what to make of it right now, just that the order changes somewhat. Uh, now, you might be wondering, how, how do I optimize my own builds? 
Uh, to help you do this, I have added a tool to the sheet which just spits out the most efficient means of adding modules. So how do you use it? We'll do an example. By the way, don't build this ship. It's just something I tossed together for demo purposes. Step one, build everything else in the ship. Uh, here I have an Alliance Chieftain. Say we want to practice our PA aim so we make something for bounty hunting. Gotta scoop up those mats so we have our limpets and cargo racks. That leaves us with three class 4 military slots. Step 2. Input your values for your shield into the tool. Now just look at the bottom. Grab your raw shield value, power draw, stick it in. Ours is 832.3 divided by 4.774 plus the 4.5 for the shield boosters. So here, copy, paste. Step 3. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Step four, profit. Basically, I've got a function up here that just sorts based on what's most efficient. Now, you can add the modules in this order to maximize your shield efficiency. We see that the Engineer Class 4 are our first choice. Each one will add some 750s shield reinforcement, which is pretty close to our base shields. How many shields do we want? Three? Stack on two SCBs, and we've got some power to spare. So we make that a module reinforcement package to help us if we overheat a little bit and we're good to go. can also make the power plant armored monster if you don't mind a little bit of power management. Another thing I sometimes do to cheese more power out is if I know I don't if I know that I don't need two SCB modules to be running at once, I will depower one and swap the active one when it runs out of SCBs. Now, am I telling you? To go and plug all of your optionals with SCBs. No. What I am saying is that if your goal is to have the most shield possible for the lowest energy cost, SCBs are a better option as long as you're looking at a class 2 slot or larger. I'm also suggesting that when you're looking at your optionals that, that there's a most efficient order you can add your modules in. However, you might have some power left over. In these cases, if you want to spend it on more shields, there's an optimal way to do that too. We'll also have to address that there, there may be some times when you, when you want to use GSRPs instead of SCBs. When would I use GSRPs instead of SCBs? Uh, in general, smaller ships that plan the regen shield rather than spend very low rated SCBs to get that shield back. If you're running biweaves on your small ship, GSRPs may be a good option. If you're leaning on that fast charge shenanigans, you can recover a, you can recover one class three GSRP worth of shield in about a minute. Wow, that's a really long time. I wonder if by weave regen is a meme. Another thing to note is uh, consider rearm and repair. The SCBs really only need to last as long as it takes you to get the base. If you plan to spend extended periods out in maybe in a hazard with your laser loadout you don't have to reload so you can stay out there as long as your fuel lasts so maybe this is when you would want to use your gsrps anyway i think that's enough from me the sheets i made are in the description of the video if you want to check my math other than that if you want me to lab something out leave a comment maybe i'll get around to it uh other than that thanks for watching